Lindsay. I've been really looking forward to this conversation. Uh, I, I sort of think of you, your, uh, my conversation with you as launching me into uh, all of this in some ways. So it's your fault. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> um, so, uh, and, you know, as you've probably noticed in a lot of my videos, I make reference to you and make references to criticism and, and comments that you make and, and respond to them along the way. So I feel kind of like you've been at least virtually accompanying me uh, along the way. Um, and, that, and, and that's, that's been very good for me and, and the project. Um, uh, it's been really intense, really busy. Uh, I, luckily, I'm on sabbatical until January, so I've been able to I'm gonna to have to, you know, cut back on sort of the virtual presence uh, come January, at least a bit. Uh, uh, but I did get some very good news. Um, uh, I, my tenure has come through, so I'm- uh, Oh, that's great, congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank you. So I'm gonna officially get my tenure. Um, so uh, there's, there's been a lot like that. How about you? I mean, are you, are you through the grueling thing of returning to your home? It, so, it sounded horrible every time. Yeah, I can no. See, I can see often you were putting sort of a ba brave face on like, oh, this is horrible. <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> uh, no, we're not. We're not back. We're going to be, we're probably going to be back in our house in uh, the summer, like spring, mm. summer, just because there are too many things to, to do on the house. And we just ran out of time in terms of winter and finding a contractor. That also that has been crazy because right. there's 2,000 houses that need to be repaired, and so just even finding a contractor was, right. was really of difficult. Of course, you know, right. but it's okay. We're we're, we're I'm fine. I, I feel like I'm back in the somewhat of a groove. I'm getting carvings out, and I'm I'm uh, you know my videos are good, coming out, good, and so good. you know I feel I feel. Oh yeah. Good, so. yeah, yeah. You're doing really good work too, by the way. Really good work. Um, Thanks. Uh, Thanks. I, like I said, I often cite you uh, in the series and podcasts and interviews. Uh, uh, yeah, much. I've I've been thinking a lot about. I feel like a lot of the the language that you're bringing, or the the connection that you're bringing in terms of you know the the in terms of consciousness, and then trying to connect that to religious language and using specific words. I feel has been really useful for me. I find myself. Uh, using words that you're using or expressions that you're using because it seems like they're the right, they have the right, they talk about things in a way that people can understand because a lot of the problems with religious language is that a lot of the words have been ruined. They've just been yes. completely ruined. And so no, no, people don't agree. understand what they're, what they're referring to. Yeah. And uh, it feels like a lot of the words you're using are helping to, to find an, uh, another way to talk about things so that people know what's going on. What, like, what are we talking about? Th thank you for saying that because that was a, you know, um, that was an explicit goal for me. I, I phrased it from the very beginning about, you know, a conceptual vocabulary and a theoretical grammar. And that's what I would most want to do. Obviously I'm going to argue for positions because that's the nature of what I'm doing, but that's, that genuinely is secondary to me providing um, you know, some deep tools by which people can reflect and think and potentially engage in uh, transformative processes. And it's, it's been, it's been very gratifying that um, I've, I've received the same feedback um, from different religious communities too. Um, so I've, I've received similar feedback from Buddhists. Uh, I gave a talk, uh, I, it's on my channel. I was talking with Hamza Tsesoros. He was an Islamic uh, intellectual philosopher. Um, and I, I had a similar response uh, from um, from the uh, the Muslim community, um, so I think I mean I genuinely think that's great, um, and, and so um, I'm hopeful that the, the the series that I'm working on now, because I'm putting a lot of work into it, both theoretically and you know, sort of uh, research, empirical, you know, uh, sort of participatory observation. I, I'm hoping that 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 will also be the case for for the next series. So uh, thank you for saying that. That uh, that's very important to me. Yeah. The uh, the concept of relevant realization, I feel, you know, when just saying it is, it can help people understand what is this about, you know? Yes. Um, yeah. And, and so, and so I've been using that term a lot and uh, this idea of optimal grip and just the idea of finding the balance between two opposites that yeah, the, the yeah. way that you're able to create analogies in different spheres about, you know, the, the, the problem of, uh, the problem, for example, of thinking that efficiency is going to is if you're just yep. more efficient, that it's going to work. Yep. It's like, no, it's not going to work because yeah, then yep, you're yep. lacking. You're going to miss the other aspect, which is to give yourself flexibility in order to, yep. to change. Exactly. Um, exactly. And, and so I think that that type of discussion is so useful and can help people understand why uh, 
a lot of utopias are just not possible. They're actually not possible because you always have to leave uh, mm -hmm. just the mm -hmm. idea of leaving buffers and leaving, uh, you know, when people talk about, let's say, a kind of eugenics or some type of eugenics, you can see that that, that it, yeah, it just yeah. even rationally can't, it just reasonably <laughs> cannot work because you don't understand some of these marginal characteristics that you think are useless right yeah, now. Yeah, you just yeah, don't understand yeah, no, what they can be, you know? Yeah. I think, I think messing around in our, our genetics is, yeah, I, I agree with that argument completely. Um, as you, as you, well, I do. I just, I think it's, I, I, I think the frame problem, the, all the, all the unknown uh, side effects and the fact that because the way genetics operate, uh, they're going to be dynamically self-organizing in ways we can't foresee. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm deeply suspicious of that. I, I mean, I'm deeply suspicious of all utopias. I make that very clear in the series a, a, a lot. I mean, Alexander Bard has criticized me for that. Uh, um, you know, along the lines, you know, uh, the, 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 you you can't leave the people without a vision kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm very I'm very wary of utopias precisely because of that kind of concern. Um, they seem to be, it's hard to see them as anything other than hubristic, right? Mm. It's hard to see them as anything other than that for the reasons you just articulated. Yeah, I think that one of the things, I mean, so, so this is, as I kind of discovered your series, at first when we had our discussion, you know, it was, it was great, it was, we were kind of discovering each other and then watching your series, on the one hand, I was like, this is awesome, this is awesome. And then other things, I was like, oh, sir, yeah, of sir, course. sir, of course. like I want. Yeah, of course. Can and, I and, say something? And part of what I would like to do, I mean, I, I've tried to show that I, I take responsibility in the deep meaning of the word of making myself available, respond to people, and to respond to people uh, in good faith and respect and even with affection. Um, I, I, I keep, I, that is what I want to do. And I keep showing that. I, I, this is not just empty words. I, I think it's fair to me to say I keep exemplifying that that is important to me, and I want to give, uh, I want to, I want to give you an opportunity to, to to do that if you wish to, to take this time to do that. Um, and I, and I trust you. I you know uh, the same way I trust Paul. Like Paul and I will disagree, uh, but I, like I say, I often try. I trust Paul and I trust you often more than I trust people that I might share the same metaphysical mm -hmm. presuppositions with because I get. I am convinced that, you know, because, uh, you know, we, we've spoken at Lake at least a couple times. I've seen you a lot. I watch you a lot. I see you in interactions with Paul. Same thing with Paul. Right. And then also now I'm entering in, you know, conversations with, you know, people that are deeply influenced by you, like JP. Um, uh, and so, and, and also I'm uh, uh, entering into conversations with Mary. Well, what, I, what I'm trying to say is I trust people who are like, like yourself and Paul precisely because I, I get, a, I have a conviction that you're coming to this in good faith. And I'm much more interested in that. Like the last, uh, the, the video that you commented on, uh, but, and I commented on it too, I thought the video that JP and Mary made in response to, I, I thought that was excellent. And uh, I'd perhaps like to talk about the, uh, one of the points they made at the end, because I've been thinking a lot about it, because I thought it was a very, very good point. Um, and I'd, they, they, they didn't quite craft it into what I would consider a coherent argument. So I'd like to steal man it a bit, try and build it up into a stronger argument and then uh, discuss it with you at some point, because I, I found that I found that really, really interesting. The three of us are going to all talk uh, soon, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but you that's where you specifically put up. I wanted to put my hand up. No, no, it was with Jordan <laughs> Hall that you did that. It was the Jordan, no, Hall, the it, Jordan it, Hall conversation it, the whole time. I was like, oh, yeah, man, no, I, it, it, was, it was with Mary and JP that you put the thing up about um, infinite relevance realization. Yeah. That was and I wanted to talk to you about that, too. So there was two things there, yeah. Okay. So uh, maybe what do you, we can what talk you... about. We can start to. I mean, think maybe we can start to talk and talk about God because I guess that's the that's the big <laughs> that's the big thing. Like it's okay. the thing that it's always keeps coming back up. Uh, and uh, and so and so and so I mean I I've been kind of following what you were saying in terms of non-theism, and I understand. I mean, I understand Buddhism and uh, Taoism in terms of non-theistic um, mm -hmm. religions. My, I guess my big question is, where do you put mind in your system? Like where, at what level of reality does it enter into? Because if you, even if you look at these non-theistic religions in practice, when they're actually practice, there always ends up being a hierarchy of minds that appears in, 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 in the practice of it. And so even though you can say something like, uh, I mean, even Hinduism, ultimately, if you look at, at uh, kind of Advaita Vedanta Hinduism, like it all moves towards non-being, but then there's a hierarchy of beings that appear right away, right after, let's say, the yeah, statement yeah. of non-being. 
and then you have either a you know a hierarchy yeah, yeah. of bodhisattvas or a hierarchy of gods or whatever you, you sure. so so my question is how do you like where does it come into your system um and the the second question is if like christians let's say monotheists want to put it up as high as possible but mm-hmm. right? they mm-hmm. want to put it up as high as possible and sure. they do have the idea like if you look at pronouncements about the divine nature it's always it always looks like something that is non-theistic like if you look at the yeah. the, the, yeah. the pronunciations of the mystics on divine nature it always looks I, as and I, and I cite them i cite them i, I give credit right i give credit to uh, saying like some of these ideas like the term epictasis and others i say i attribute it to the mm. christian mystics i i don't try and steal those ideas i make it no, very no, no. clear no, i make it very clear that you know they're, they're, those ideas are present there but so so i guess my point is that even even if you let's say in 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 trinitarian theology you say something like the divine nature cannot be spoken of the divine nature is is uh, non-being you have saint maximus who talks about be, a god as being uh, being and non-being together something like that uh, you know like this this ultimate aporia um, yeah yeah but then as soon as there's let's say as soon as there's manifestation as soon as there's manifestation as soon as there's you know persons let's say Anything specific, anything that you can say, anything that you can say, even negatively, like the, then there's mind appears, right? Mm. Uh, and so that that to me is so, so. I guess like I'm trying to understand like how you. So if you want to not have, let's say, God, uh, like where does it appear in your system? Uh, sure. And then also, uh, if you don't want to put it somewhere, like in the system, like then you have, to me, you have the problem of Maya. You have the problem of everything's an illusion. This, this, you know, the, the notion sure. that the, the sure, manifestation sure. is, is always inadequate. Like is always, is always, you know, verging on nothing you could say. Sure. Sure. Or well, nothing in the pejorative sense, not no. Yeah, nothing in the pejorative yeah. sense. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, that's a really complex question. So I, I might need to talk for a bit. I mean, yeah, I, I, the, evi- the answer is seven. Right? It's yeah. not going to be like that. Right. Um, <laughs> um, so first of all, I want to acknowledge that. And I, I mean, and I can strengthen your argument by pointing to the fact that once you get sort of beyond Plotinus, Neoplatonism goes that way too. You see a, the, you see a hierarchy of, of godlike beings, for example, in Proclus. Um, so um, is that a general tendency? I, I, Sure. I, I, so I want to acknowledge that. Um, I'm a little bit hesitant to say that, you know, everything does it. Zen Buddhism, I think, is really strict on, uh, on a, a non-theism sort of all the way uh, up. Uh, but we can talk about that maybe another time. Let's take it that at least there's a preponderance uh, phenomena that support your claim. I think that's, that's, that's fair. I don't want to, I don't want to offend any Zen Buddhists who might be watching and saying, no, we just don't do, we don't make any images and yeah, yeah, or have any persons. So, uh, things like that. Um, so let's turn it over then. Uh, I mean, there's two questions that we, we, we would have to distinguish and, uh, and they interact, but they shouldn't be identified. One might be, uh, and I tried to talk about this, and I tried to make a distinction between metaphysical necessity and, and psychological indispensability. And I hope you accept that I do not treat psychological indispensability as a dismissive thing. It's not, it's not like a, a new atheist kind of, oh, you know, and, and you just dismiss it aside, right? It's, it, it's, it's much more that um, I take it that there are certain ways of framing uh, reality that might be indispensable for people's relevance realization to create the meaning that they need for their lives. Okay, so that's, I, I mean, that's not the same thing uh, 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 as just saying, oh, you know, people have these illusions or stuff like that. It's not, it's not intended like that. So might it be the case, because the reason why I'm saying this is Paul has specifically made this argument in my presence and asked me to mm-hmm. comment on, on, you know, that it might be that, and Paul, uh, 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 so um, I mean, part of it is I wanted to be very charitable to Paul out of good hospitality. He invited me on. And so I was trying to uh, 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 be very, um, well, I wanted to be anyways, because I like Paul a lot, but I was trying to be very responsive. Um, but there was, it was a, I couldn't quite understand, I couldn't quite get clear. And I, we sort of ran out towards the end because the argument had culminated if he was making uh, uh, one kind of argument or another, because the argument he seemed to be making is, um, we need to get into the spirit of finesse in order to enter into a proper relationship with God. It's a Pascalian argument. 
and that um, the best way we can get into the spirit of finesse is by taking a personalistic orientation. And then that's how we ultimately relate to God. And I, and I sort of, I, did, I didn't have any deep criticisms of that, but I'm afraid that I might have, uh, I might have been unfair to him in that because I just sort of translated that into my, in my mind into this notion of, well, you know, yes, that might be indispensable for people. They might, they might, that might be the only way many people can trigger uh, the correct, uh, you know, full being finesse uh, to get into the proper relationship with ultimate reality or whatever we want, what neutral term we want to use until we talk more deeply about God. Um, and, and, and let me give you, just so your, uh, your viewers are clear, uh, the analogy I use, well, the example I use about distinguishing indispensability from necessity. Um, I, I'm not bilingual by any means. I'm not <laughs> like you. Um, so um, English is, is psychologically indispensable to me. I mean, uh, I can't do this. I can't do the work. I can't, right? Without it, I just can't do a, a most of my complex meaning-making projects, right? But that doesn't mean that I should conclude that it's metaphysically necessary in that all cognitive agents have to think or speak English. That's, that's a ridiculous claim. So it's very, if there is no contradiction between saying something is psychologically indispensable, again, not in the dismissive sense, it really matters to me. English really matters to me, right? And it's really, it really contributes to my functionality from concluding that it's metaphysically necessary. So I sort of translated in, uh, Paul's argument in my mind to, oh yes, you want to get into the spirit of finesse, that's the proper orientation, and you take on a personalistic framing, and that gives you access. And I thought, that's an argument for sort of psychological indispensability. I immediately also thought, there are also ways in which people do this impersonally. I mean, Taoism is a religion of finesse that does, you know, interactional psychosomatic stuff that gets you deeply into a flow state, a finesse state. Um, and it doesn't, in, in fact, when you're in, when you're in Tai Chi, you're not in any kind of personalistic mode. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it strikes me that I could understand, hmm, again, I'm, I'm trying to be very respectful here. I can deeply understand what a Christian says, you know, this is, seems, right, indispensable to me. I, I just don't go the next step and say, I think it's metaphysically uh, necessary. So one, one thing we might think is, um, it's clearly not metaphysically necessary, and here would be my argument, uh, because as you said, there are, you know, there, there, there are the exemplary figures um, that don't seem to need personalistic language uh, to describe uh, the ultimate uh, with all, uh, within all of these traditions, uh, you know, Plotinus and the Neoplatonic tradition, uh, uh, at least some, at least some of the uh, the, the mystical writings I've read with the, within uh, within Christianity, you know, Eckhart famously said, you know, God save me from God and, and things like that. Um, and, and so I don't know if it is, so this is what it comes down to. I don't want to deny, and I don't know if you would like my, how I'm going to use this word. I won't want, because I, I think it lines up with you, but maybe not. I mean, I think personalism is, at least John Hicks would like it. it. This is a deeply symbolic way, right? It's in that it's psychologically indispensable for people. And it might be indispensable uh, in a, in a, in a, beyond the personal, like an individual indispensability. There might be sort of cultural historical reasons why certain, for certain groups of people, uh, something could become indispensable. Uh, to think and relate to God um, through uh, like the, the symbolism of personality. I don't know if, for reasons I've tried to articulate, if that licenses any claim towards um, it being, a meta, being a metaphysically necessary and therefore an inherent feature of ultimate reality uh, per se. Um, now, um, I, I guess the question then becomes if, and this is part of the, the argument I wanted to make, like if we, if we go that way, then we're into, you know, there's some sort of analogous relationship to personhood and godhood, if you'll allow me that term, and I don't mean any disrespect by it. You, you, I hope you, you understand that. Um, I mean, Eckhart uses it, so presumably it, it's, it, right? Um, and, and then here's the problem I have. I mean, I'm just, I, I, I'm deeply, I made this argument in the series, so you perhaps are familiar with it. I'm just deeply impressed with Goodman's argument about similarity. There's no logical algorithm for similarity. There's no rule. For deciding similarity because similar everything is infinitely similar and dissimilar and I, I mean and, and and isn't that technically the case isn't it is equally legitimate to say that God is uh, 
um, totally not like a person as much as he's totally like a person. Yeah. Um, and so Goodman's argument seems to have purchase here. So I regard the issue, I regard the argument about whether or not even it's sim, you know, symbolically true, if that means something beyond psychological indispensability. I regard that as, as uh, for the reasons I just tried to articulate, I regarded that as just undecidable. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, there's no way of coming to a conclusion that, you know, it's ultimately, this is the best kind of, uh, uh, of similarity, the, the personal similarity. I, I just don't, I just don't see that. If best means something beyond, it's often psychologically indispensable uh, to people. So that's, that's, that's where I, I sort of stand. Now, well, I, I, let, I, I haven't answered your second question. I did say there was two, but I'll let you respond to the first thing. I, I, I'm keeping a mental thing that you want to want me to place in the ontology. Well, at least where it is that you place yeah, it. Where, yeah, where it is. Uh, but I, I wanted to say first, I wanted to separate that first question from the ontological question because they're often, they're often spoken together and I think it's often confusing to speak them, to address them together. Mm -hmm. So I want to pull them apart. I want to give you a chance now to respond to that first question. All right. Well, I think, I mean, the way that I, that I would approach what you said is it brings back the problem of Maya, the, the problem of, of illusion, uh, yeah. because let's say our experience of person or the experience of, of relational experience of a, of a, of a being that is, like you said, at like like me, different from me, and that communion that you experience, yeah. that has to come from somewhere, right? It mm -hmm. has to come from somewhere ontologically. It has to come from some somewhere metaphysically. If it if we can't if we can't place it, then it is illusion. Then then it is then it has to be a kind of a kind of sure. a kind of uh, a kind of Maya, a kind of. Uh, yeah, and and so to me that is that is one of the reasons why like you said for sure i think that eastern christians they don't they they don't see god when we say every everything we say about god is an, an analogy it is never speaking directly about god so when i say mm -hmm. god is a, is a person i don't mean it in the same way as i am a person but what i mean is you could say that he is the source of person he is the source of mm -hmm. Of, of of these things and so he, yes exactly but he is not he's not a person in the same way i'm a person every you know um everything we say about god is always is always uh how can i say this is always missing the mark and i think that that's really important in terms of theology is that there is no uh every word we use about god is not uh how can i say this if we say god is love there's a, there's a hierarchy which means the way that we say God is love is, is like the source of all manifestations of love. It's never mm. e mm. equal to my experience of love or, or, or whatever. So it always kind of moves towards this infinite. Um, and so that to me, that, that, so I guess it, then it'll, it'll, you'll have to answer the second question because I'm bringing it back to the second question, which is okay. where does it come yeah. from? Like, yeah. Okay. So, but there's, uh, yeah, like, but, uh, sorry, I'm going to be a bit of a philosopher here. I want to go step by step. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, uh, because I think, uh, I, I mean, I, wa I want to be fair to both you and to me. Uh, and so I'm going to try and, so I like the move you made and, that, and, 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 uh, and uh, that's how I've sort of tried to think about it, um, uh, to be fair to me. I've tried to think about what people are saying is they're saying like God is the source of personhood, uh, but God is of course also the source of oceanhood. He's also the, the source of treehood, He's, right? Uh, I mean, that's the sort of the Neoplatonic idea, right? Uh, and, and again, um, and, and, you know, pseudo Dionysus sort of does this. He says, you know, you could, you could even say, you know, God's a stone and the, the Bible, and he quotes verses where God's compared to a rock. And mm -hmm. he says, you know, um, and, and so um, I, I guess what I, I'm trying to get at is why this, I, I, d there might be an implicit claim here. So I'm asking you, I'm not foisting it on you, right? That, right, when I'm communing with like again, godhood, ultimate reality, whatever, the real, the really real, uh, as, as, as people often describe it phenomenologically. So at least that's a somewhat neutral term because it picks up on a lot. That seems to be a convergent thing. Um, I don't think the, the, the ground of my personhood is a person, <laughs> like within me. I, I, I mean, this is almost like a Jungian idea. I'm not, I'm not saying that 
I'm, it's, I'm trying to point to other people who have talked in a similar manner or uh, Tillich talks about, you know, uh, the, the, the ground of my being, right, the existential. And I don't think that's a person. I, I, and to be fair to me, I tried to articulate that. I tried to articulate how the notion of personhood is grounded in something like, you know, the processes of relevance realization and that, that, that our relationship to that is, you know, something that's a source. And so what I was indicating is, I think a lot of times what people are doing when they're trying to communicate, if you'll allow me these metaphors, and I know they're problematic, when I'm trying to communicate with external, you know, the external ground, the best symbol for me isn't actually the personal level, it's the level of my ground, right? Uh, it's the level uh, from which my meaning making and my consciousness and, and all of those things emerge. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's something like what people used to mean by a soul, I'm not sure. Uh, but I think of that as, um, well, I don't like what soul became, it just sort of in Descartes. It just yeah, became yeah, an yeah, yeah, I hate that too. Okay. Uh, so that's why I'm, 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 I'm putting it in quotation. Marks. Yeah. And so I think, in fact, I think that when you look at the mystics, that seems because they make, when they're making identity claims, because they do make identity claims, they'll often say, I am a one with God and things like that. I don't think they mean at, that they're communing with God at the personal level, because they don't talk that way. Uh, they talk about dropping into the ground of their being and that that is the only thing that allows them to commune or participate. And I don't think that's in any way an illusion. I don't see why that has to be an illusion. I, I mean, I, uh, I've tried to articulate all kinds of language that I think makes that a viable way uh, to talk. Um, so I don't think I'm committed uh, to the problem of Maya by saying that I think what I see happening in a, in a lot of the non-theistic claims um, is that people are saying, no, no, the best, the, the deepest way, right, the deep calling to deep, as it says in the Psalms, right, the deepest part of me is actually, uh, the, is, is, is the ground of my personhood is not itself a person, it's, it's something deeper, more basic. And I think there's aspects of, uh, I mean, that's where the deep participatory knowing comes in. The, the way my psyche is self-organizing and, 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 and the way it's self-presencing and, and all of that sort of thing, uh, I, I think that gives me much better, if you'll allow me, analogs. Although, again, given my own argument, I can't give you a logical argument that that's the best because I mm -hmm. think they're all logically equivalent. So I'm back to saying I find that ca captures a lot of more of the phenomenology and it therefore is more responsible to the psychological indispensability than the level of personal language. Yeah. Um, well, I, maybe it, it's because the person, maybe it's just the problem of what a person is because uh, to well, me, that's, yeah, yeah, that's I mean, horrible. maybe that's where we're, we're hitting a rock here because, uh, you know, you, you read in the fathers, you read in the mystics, they, they always say, you, you know, you are not your thoughts, you're not your, your feelings, you're not your yeah, desires, yeah, yeah. all of those things that actually doesn't constitute your person. Like you, a person in Christian language is, is an instantiation of a nature, like that's a person. And so there's a, there's a nature, which is human nature. And then, a. uh, a person is a is a person like it's a human and that's what a, that's what a person is and so it's 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 the it's the actual um it's the landing of a nature it's a land it's the landing of the nature in 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 an, an actuality like so so it it, okay. it, it has a but I need you to be a little bit more specific. Sorry for interrupting because yeah. I don't I don't want I don't want to lose because I I, I think I'm going to be misunderstanding you if I, if I let you go on. So I, so, so the to, word when we say person, I'm just worried I, I'm just worried about everything everything instantiates a nature right <laughs> like trees instantiate treehood. I mean that's the platonic exactly. Well, you would say I mean you, that, in Christian language it's the opposite. Like it's 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 the opposite of, of the, <laughs> the. I mean I don't have a problem with this emergent thing, but. Yeah, the, yeah. Like, like, give me the, 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 the little give you the language to see I, I, it from I wasn't, the top it, down, let's say. Yeah, Jonathan, it wasn't a challenge question. I wanted okay. you to, I, I need to, I need to, I, I need to, I need to see where the specificity of personhood comes in, other than in the instantiation of a nature, because everything instantiates its, its nature. Exactly. Right? Well, everything, okay. yeah, exactly. But so it's okay, the idea okay. of, of that is, 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 is the notion of a hypostasis. Like that's, yeah, yeah. that's, that's, that's the idea, notion, that's, yeah, the, yeah. that's the idea of a, uh, of a person in terms of Christian language, you know, like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an, act, ah. it's, a, it's an actual tree. It's not okay. just <laughs> that it's not. So that's what to so, me. So you see, so it's fair to say you see, uh, uh, sorry, hmm. you see personhood in the 
the the being like meant as the active presencing of a tree you see yeah. personhood in that oh wow oh I mean, okay. person in the sense of hypostasis like in the sense of in the sense of a of a, of a i mean not in the sense of how can i say this not in the not in the common sense that we understand uh person in the sense of an individual uh, like a human individual but well the, the, uh, but but there's more to that i mean that human individual sense we extend moral rights and privileges to it that i, I extend those to you that i wouldn't extend to a tree because right. i consider you a person okay right? so so it, i mean obviously it does it does also depend on on the nature of what what is being instantiated uh and right. so but so so the idea like let's say in terms of understanding personhood in terms of christianity the way that we understand personhood is 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 that in commun it's it's almost like emergence you know it yeah, really yeah. sounds like emergence is that as a person i am in communion with other persons and mm -hmm. that is that is what makes me exist as a person mm -hmm. because i am in as a person as an instantiation of my nature in communion with other instantiations of the human nature i that's how we exist as humans that's what so makes people that's what makes that's what makes human and so okay. and so the instantiation so the trinity is right. what makes god no i i understand that and yeah. i like i i'm sorry i don't mean to, i'm not claiming to understand the trinity no, I mean, I just, I, I, I'm, I understand also, that. I'm also not claiming to understand the trinity but i'm just trying <laughs> no, to no. help to help see things a little maybe a little differently than because i feel like we always confuse a person with like an individual in the sense of my individual no. rights and my thoughts and my feelings no and no my, no this, this is good. I want to I want to go with this carefully. So thank you. That was first of all very helpful. I mean, because I'm very familiar with the notion of hypostasis. Because I'm deeply, I, I'm deeply. I mean, uh, it, it. You know, it, it's 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 it, it seems to emerge in literature in, in Plotinus, right? Um, and and I uh, and to be fair to me, many people describe it this way. They 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 regard the emanations of the hypostasis as something non personal uh, because uh, uh, of the way um, uh, you, you know some of the things you're saying, we, we tend to attribute certain mental and dispositional properties to persons that the, the, uh, the hypostasis don't have, for example. Um, so there seems to be a key, key thing um, in that you, what you're saying, it, if I'm understanding you, and please interrupt me if I'm misunderstanding you, because I interrupted you, okay? Um, what you seem to be saying is, there's two things. The first is, um, at least the Eastern Christian. I, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I, I didn't. I didn't hear this at all in, in Protestant circles when I was growing up. So, but I. I, I so I want to be careful here. But I, I'm going to take you as an authority of Eastern Christianity. Um, <laughs> That's so, dangerous. Sorry. <laughs> so, 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 sorry for putting that hat on you. But yeah. you're the only one here in the dialogue. So I've got yeah. to. I've got to do what I can do. So you're saying there's a sense in which um, the idea of any of that. Any of that like emanation right i don't know what you like you said instantiation as a process as, as opposed to just a label any of any of that instantiation right the hypostization if you'll let, allow me to turn it into a verb you regard that as kind of uh, that's a personal that's part of the personal dimension and then there seems to be something specific in that instantiation of human nature that makes human persons if, if you'll forgive me as opposed to tree personhood is is that am I understanding for you sure correctly? in the sense that so the way that the way that Saint Maximus uh, understands it is that there is a there's a hierarchy of natures, mm -hmm. you know, and and the human human nature because it has mind because it has meaning because it it makes and participates in meaning, it gathers like it, it also gathers all the other natures in himself. So so the per, the human person gathers all the natures in himself. So the, the image that St. Maximus talks about is that the, the human person is like at the top of the mountain. He's in the center. He's in the center. He's, a, yeah. he's in the, and he's in the middle and he gathers all the natures in himself. And then when he does that in love, then he unites himself with God. Like it, so this, it's actually by doing that, he's actually uniting himself with God. I, I, I mean, I understand it. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to make an identity claim here, but this reminds me of Aristotle's notion that everything has the form, but the human mind is capable of gathering all the forms into itself. And then you yeah. get Plotinus's idea that that allows, that, that gives the human mind a capacity to conform to the source of all the forms, yeah. which is and, the one. Uh, yeah, that is definitely, so, that is definitely how Christians see it, but they don't, they don't, uh, they really do see it in terms uh, of, 
of love. Like, it, and yeah. the reason why they see it in terms of love is that it, it prevents the problem of the, the um, hypostases or the actual manifestations of things being secondary or being illusions. No, no, I, I get that. Uh, uh, so yeah, remember, I, I, I have noted you making that point and I, I, take, it, uh, I take it very seriously. So uh, I, I do want to come back to that point. Because um, this is really important in, in terms of understanding why Christianity uh, is, is, is part of, let's say, why Christianity is also part of what made science so powerful. Because no, no, we, uh, we believe yeah. that the instantiations are real. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, the, and the idea that, um, yeah, that Christianity, uh, uh, okay, you, uh, you've, got, you've triggered about four <laughs> things in my mind right now. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, no, 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 that's good. Okay, so uh, first of all, I want to go back. So the, the question now seems um, that maybe then if I, I'm happy to extend uh, sort of personhood in that sense, if you want to use that term to that notion of the process of hypostasation with the idea that um, what is hypostatized, <laughs> oh my gosh, is, 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 is not illusory. So let, let, uh, that's fine. Um, but the, the question becomes like, then we did it, we, we ended up doing it. Uh, uh, and, we, and you sort of agreed with my presentation back to you that I'd understood you that mind seems to be something ontologically different in that um, it, is, it is a logos of forms. It can gather and yeah. so forms belong together and that gives it a, an ability to conform source, uh, right? Um, and so the question then becomes, I guess for me again, um, is um, uh, the degree to which I see the logos as equivalent to my mind. Um, um, and, and that's 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 going to be a little bit tricky. Um, I understand what you're doing here, um, but maybe let, let's ask, let's ask the question this way. Let's look at it this way. And so okay. let's say you say that that mind is different because it's a, it it gathers right. Yes. It's able to gather and it create and it sees and participates in patterns. Okay. So in terms of of your let's say ontology, does that come to the human person and then stop, or does mm. can you see mind above? in higher well, beings. Well, why I was hesitating, sorry, I, I didn't mean to be obscure, is uh, the term mind has multiple reference. I even have a talk on that, right? Uh, we, we, when we use the word mind nowadays, we, we, we point to many different things at many different ontological levels that have different ontologies, have different ways. I mean, we, pe and people do this, to be fair yes, to me. For sure. they, they, they mean brain sometimes. Oh, yeah. they, they mean information processing. They mean behavior, right? They mean uh, langu language communication. They mean participation in culture. Uh, they mean, you know, what's available to us in distributed cognition through culture. They mean all of those things. And the disciplines that study them don't speak the same language, don't use the same methodology, don't gain, get, gather the same uh, evidence. So that's why I'm hesitant about just using this word mind, because I find that term uh, deeply, deeply equivocal uh, uh, for us. That's why I was trying to shift off of mind. Uh, and, and I was trying to get at, you know, the grounding of, uh, of our ability to sort of make sense. Okay, uh, well with, I'm okay. fine with that. I'm fine with making meaning, making sense, uh, yeah, gathering patterns, uh, recognizing patterns, you know, even the idea of relevant realization, let's say sure. use that word. So okay. if, if we want to use that expression, that's fine. But my question is, does it, does it go up to us and then st uh, stop? Or does it continue to, is there more, is there that, is there relevant yeah, realization yeah. at higher levels? Sure, of sure. Uh, okay, now that's, okay. okay, so now I feel like I, I've got the question, and thank you for giving me that, that was generous on your part. But I do think, um, I do think there is a deep consonance between the ancient notion of logos and what I'm talking about in relevance realization. Oh, right? for sure, yeah. Okay, yeah, great, thank sure. you for acknowledging that. Um, and and um, uh, so, I think that it's, I mean, I, and I'm demonstrating that I'm committed to this. I'm committed to the idea that there is uh, forms of relevance realization that exceed individuals. And I've, I've acknowledged this to JP. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I'm doing a lot of work right now. And, th and this is a big thing. You can see it being a big topic, uh, you know, in places like Rebel Wisdom. The idea of distributed cognition uh, possessing uh, collective intelligence. And there's been some rather horrific experiments, by the way, sort of demonstrating this. There's a scientist who literally wired rats' brains together. <laughs> like, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's very Orwellian. Yeah. And what, what you can show is that system of rats, <laughs> right, can solve problems that the individual rats can't solve. 
-hmm. So we always knew this sort of intuitively, but now you have sort of quant quantified measurement evidence for this claim. So it's mm -hmm. no, it's no longer just the woo woo claim, yeah. right? It, it's it, no, no, so. I mean, the, uh, yeah. The, the, what's really frightening, Jonathan, uh, just to portend what might be happening, is they've done some preliminary experiments with humans with direct linkage through the neural, the neural chips. Hmm. Um, and so, yeah, that's scary that's, stuff. Yeah, that's scary stuff. So let's put the, let's put the Orwellian stuff aside. <laughs> so I think, I mean, I think I should be, and I think I have been, a responsible scientist in acknowledging, I think, uh, and the reality of, of. Uh, uh, collective intelligence and distributed cognition. That's why I'm very interested in the Socratic project, because I think the Socratic project is a project of trying to uh, do something analogous to what we do in individual cognitive, where we take intelligence into rationality, into wisdom. And the Socratic project is, can I take collective intelligence, bring it up into collective rationality and bring it up into collective wisdom? Um, and and I think all of that is viable. That's what I'm, one of the things I'm exploring in the next series. So I think all of that is the case. And you should know, but this is taken very seriously in cognitive science. This idea of distributed cognition having something like collective intelligence and having a kind of problem solving. So I think, I think I can. I'm happy with saying that um, relevance realization extends beyond us into something. Um, I don't know. Is, is this sacrilegious? I don't mean it to be. But like the ecclesia, a gathering where people are gathering mm -hmm. together yeah. and, and trying to uh, and trying to. Uh, a form of a cooperative. Yeah. You know, and, you, like, you, and, and you see that, I mean, in scripture, you have the idea of the angels of cities. You have these, yeah. these notions that there are, you know, that there are patrons uh, yeah. and, and those beings are manifest the, the, the communion of a, of a group. They are yeah. like the, they're the head. Uh, but I, I mean, it, I think that, I guess maybe now is, is where I want to get back. Cause once you express something, which I was like, ah, I was like, you, you're, you're on the, you're on the track that I wish you were on. Uh, you, you <laughs> talked about, you talked about, uh, uh, Eugenia and, yeah, uh, Eugenia obviously takes a lot of his stuff from, from, uh, Dionysus and Maximus. Um, you know, he translated Maximus into Latin. Yeah. Um, that's, and that's so, why I'm so interested in him because he, he's the last great sort of synthesis in my mind of East and West. Uh, Eastern Western Christianity. And so you, you, cause, cause I, let's say I used to always, I, I, I would think top down, like I, I, I'm a, yeah, yeah. a Platonist. I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian yeah, Platonist. Yeah. I think top down. Um, and then it's only, it's only discovering Jordan Peterson and you and, and, uh, being in contact with agnostics and atheists. It's like, I was, I kind of forced myself to think bottom up. Yeah. Um, Thank and you. to to yeah. to think of communion and to think of things coming together and and these complex yeah. systems coming up. And once you said, uh, you said, it seems like Eugenia is saying that those two, like the yeah, the, yeah. The, the emergence and the top down emanation, yeah, the emanation, they're they're actually happening at the same time. Yeah, and his notion of creation. I'm still I'm still committed to that, and yeah. still committed to discussing that. And, and I so, think that that's that that is so that you see the same in Saint Maximus. He says that. Ex uh, explicitly he talks mm. about there are some quotes of, of him where he talks about how um you know when when you at when the mystic sees let's say the 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 the, the particulars separate from their essences you know and he can see it he also sees that they're the same like that yes, they yeah, that they're yes, actually yeah, you know yeah. th that that the that the the coming together of the particulars is the same as the naming coming from above you know, yeah, uh, and, and what's interesting, I, 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 I that uh, yes, totally. And I'm, I'm reading some Maximus. Well, I'm reading about Maximus right mm -hmm. now quite a bit. Um, because as you said, if you want to understand your genius, you've got to understand Maximus. So I'm not claiming to understand in the way you do, it's but tough, I'm trying to get but it's, it's yeah, hard to yeah, understand. It takes a yeah. while to get through, get to the language, too. <laughs> well, but that's usually what it is for a great philosopher. Yeah. You have to, it, it's not just the words, it's their, it's their mindset. You have to, you have to habitus to it. You have to learn how to inhabit it. And, and that's what's often most, I often find that that's what's most valuable about a philosopher other than the, the particular propositions mm. they assert. So I like everything you said, um, and, and because I'm trying to, I'm trying to get beyond an ontology that privileges emergence and emanation. And, and, and why this connects up to what we're talking about is, you know, um, uh, Erigina specifically uses dialectic. He, he writes the Parafusion, the division of nature, as a dialogue. And, and many people comment on it. They sometimes call him the Hegel of the ninth century, which I think is a disservice to Erigina, because his notion of, uh, his notion of dialectic, as I think, is much more um, Christian platonic than it is Hegelian. Uh, but, but so because uh, he sees creation as an inherently dialectical because it is this... 
um, this complete interpenetration, uh, top to bottom. Yeah. Uh, uh, right. And and for me, you know, I, I've tried to indicate also that that's our best models of cognition are inherently, you know, bottom up, top down, completely interpenetrating. Mm. Right. And so there's something deeply analogous between how the mind works and and and, and that kind of ontology. Um, and so I I find I think I can make a case for that. Um, well, it, I think I just did. Uh, yeah. That we, 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 we already, we already, we've already countenanced that ontology deeply in our practice of cognitive science, uh, an emergence up in some kind of uh, top-down thing. Uh, and then, and then the idea that maybe that's the best way, because the problem with each one of the two, emergence has the problem, uh, like many, like many people you pointed out, is like how do you get to the, these, 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 this sort of normative, right? And, the, and then emanation has the problem of a, why doesn't it just stay yeah. in the one? Why, why does it, it, why does, yeah, why does it, why does it come down? Exactly. Yeah. Now that, that if you'll allow me, uh, so first of all, I'm happy with, um, that's what I mean about um, an analogy at the ground of my cognition, as opposed to like an identity with my mind. See, the top down, bottom up aspect isn't a content of my mind. It isn't yeah. an aspect of my will. It's a constitutive structural functional IDOS that makes mindedness possible. Yeah. Right? Is that, are you okay with me? No, I, I agree. I mean, in, in, uh, in the Christian mystics, you all, they really do separate the notion of noose yeah, uh, from, from the idea Suka. of mind yeah. or mind yeah. in the sense of, of thinking and, and, yes. and all the, the, the the active, you know, processes that, that noose is this direct connection. It's like a, yeah. you know, it's like a, I mean, you could describe it as the ground of your being in that sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, 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 and then the, the, the connectedness would be, I don't know bottom up, top down as a thought. I know it by participating. That's in it. It right. Participatory. Oh, there you go. That's great. Yeah, that's perfect. Right. And, and, and then there's the participatory connection is vertical and horizontal at the same time, which is, by the way, the same thing in dialectic. Dialectic is happening ontologically within the individual and then horizontal between individuals. So mm. I, I think I, I can sort of, I'm sort of making sense of what Erigina is doing yeah. uh, there. And so, I, but I, if you look, like if you look at then, if once you, let's say you see that or you understand that those two things are happening at the same time, uh, then when you look at, if you, let's say, look at, Christ pronunciations with that, with those lenses, with, the, with that, that lens, all of a sudden you're going to see that he's, he's constantly shifting between, between both. He's mm. shifting between the two, you know, where on the, on the one hand, you know, when he talks about, uh, when he says things like, you know, where two or three are gathered in my name, you know, I'm there. There I am also. There yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. And that, totally. that's it. That's exactly that, it. It's like, if that, you gather that, in love, then yeah. the logos is, 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 is there. Um, but then there's also the whole image of the, uh, that of the head of the, you know, the, the idea of the, the head of the body. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, St. Paul has that analogy, the head and the body. And so that is more of a, like you get the sense of a more of a top down, but then he mm -hmm. also talks about the, the, the members of the body that are co that are fitted, well fitted together in love. Um, mm -hmm. And that is the totality of the Messiah. Like the totality of Christ is both, you know, the, the, the head and then the joining of the members in love. Um, and so you get, you get that. It's, it's, it, I think it's an interesting exercise to do is to look at some of the, to look at those. And so, so then when you get, for example, uh, an image of Christ who talks about the seeds, you know, when he, he tosses yeah. the seeds and he, so the seeds come from above and they fall. And if they fall on the right ground, then they grow. And so you have that meeting of the heaven, which comes down and meets earth. And then the, the, the earth also, let's say, brings forth like God, God yeah, says the, in, the, the in, uh, yeah, yes, in, yes. in creation. Um, and then ultimately, then you have the image of the creation of Adam, which is the gathering of dust and the blowing in of spirit. Mm. And that's it. Like that's the two at the same time. There's the gathering of dust and the blowing in of the spirit. You have the okay. You have the so, bottom up, like gathering, and then you have the top down, which is like the, the, the naming or the, you know. Th this is wonderful. I mean, and, and for, for, first of all, I'm really happy to be involved in this conversation. Um, no, no, Jonathan, this, this is not empty flattery. Your, your symbolic skills are, are, are really, really, really powerful, and I respect them. I'm, I'm liking what you're doing. Now, I would, I would say um, in response, I mean, uh, 
the reason why I, I don't associate this with classical theism is Eregina was persecuted as a heretic, right? Um, uh, and so this model, which I think is articulated very well in Eregina, uh, it's not clear why he was persecuted as a heretic either. Um, it's, it's really obscure. Um, and he just sort of disappears mm. um, historically. Um, and, and, and part of the and part of the you know the people I'm reading and, and I believe everybody I'm reading in there you know is itself identified as a Christian so if this isn't hostile Christic and there's and part of what they're pointing out is it, why like this was all this was sort of rejected and thrown away and, and it's too bad that it was because it would have been very helpful for us uh, right now that's sort of the tenor uh, mm. of what I'm reading and so that's why I mean I, I'm, I'm very hesitant to apply this model to uh, classical theism because it looked like, at least in the West, uh, the church said no, right? It, it, it sort of officially said no, <laughs> and no, we're not going that way. That's not, that's not how we should understand things. Yeah, um, uh, th there's, also, there's, also a, there's also a reality, which is that to a certain extent, <laughs> this is gonna sound weird for a lot of people, that, that there is, an, there is a not a necessity, but there is an in inevitability of a certain amount of suspicion coming from an institution uh and that that suspicion how can i say this the way that i see the i see christianity maybe it's very different from a lot of people i see that there are different actors and they're yeah. they're playing out a story um and so i think that when we see let's say the church give us warnings about um Okay, we could use even, let's use an Eastern, I, so I don't bash on the Western church, I use an Eastern example. It's like, sure, they go after origin, you know, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like, they go after origin, and it's like, origin is bad, this, 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 but it's like, origin doesn't go away. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> origin is still there. We yeah. have Evagrius, Evagrius is is brought back into the Christian literature you, using different names of different saints and pseudotexts and all of this, and so it's like, it's like, it it never goes away, but there's something about the institution, which mm -hmm. in serving its role, it also is, has the danger of, of crystallizing and of, let's say, of wanting to fix things, uh, which is good sometimes and sometimes can be dangerous. And so it's like, you always have to see all the stories at once. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, 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 that's fair, that's fair. Um, uh, I, I guess, Part of all, so, yeah, I think that's a reasonable response. I don't want to get us off track, though. I don't want to get no, us no, off no. track. No, 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 um, no. And I don't want to equate criticizing Christianity with criticizing God or anything like that. I, I, yeah, I, I want to keep those apart. I, I was just trying to tell you one reason, and I'll give yeah. you another why I'm sort of hesitant. I see the same kind of attempt to get, and I think I make a really strong case for this, and especially... Uh, you know, uh, coming out of Nargajuna within Buddhism of trying to get uh, an ontology in which there's the deep interpenetration of emergence and emanation. This is, you know, form is emptiness, right? And emptiness is form and nirvana is samsara, right? It's the idea that, right, the form, the emergent, right, the structuring and the emptiness, the source are completely interpenetrated because the identity claim there is not a logical identity. That's very clear from the text. So it's, no, it's what, what they're trying to do with the is, is they're trying to say the emergence and the emanation are are completely, completely interpenetrating. And, it, and, it's, and it's the realization of that in the sense, not of an idea, but of existential conformity that actually brings, that actually brings release, right? That brings um, salvation, that, br that brings the, um, the, the amelioration of dukkha. And so there, again, like I said, um, I, 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 the reason why I keep using the uh, sort of saying, I wanna say this as non-theism is, um, I'm not, I'm not quite convinced that, sorry, I don't want to call you a heretic. I'm not trying to say that. Uh, uh, you can uh, try. <laughs> Some people, uh, other people have done it. Yeah. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is, um, the way we're talking, I think it, it would make a lot of people who identify with classical theism uneasy. And, but it, it's also a way of talking that would make uh, a lot of people uh, in Buddhism, Nargajuna, for example, uh, very, very happy. And so this is why I, I try to use the notion of non-theism because I'm not trying to commit to uh, uh, a, a, a particular frame. And, and I'm hesitant uh, to say that I, I see this way of talking uh, uh, very prevalent in a lot of the people that identify with classical theism. Um, so 
But this goes back to, I mean, this goes back to two points. One is the degree to which, I mean, because you, you have this interesting thing that I keep referring to where you think Christianity is itself going through essentially some kind of resurrection process. Um, and I, I think that's very interesting. And then the other one goes back to the point that I wanted to do with uh, Mary and uh, JP. And that goes maybe back to the, the main thread of our conversation. Um, so if you want to come back to the other thing about Christianity, I'd be happy to do that. But the thing that they said something very interesting and, and, and it, it didn't quite, but because um, I basically see the, 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 to be fair to me also, when I was talking with JP, I was also sort of challenging a, a panpsychist interpretation of sort mm -hmm. of a supra of sort of a supra consciousness uh, because um, I, I'm not, I don't have evidence of consciousness. I don't even have evidence of a consciousness uh, for the ecclesia, for the distributed cognition. I have evidence for intelligence. Um, I don't have a, a, a evidence for anything uh, like consciousness. Um, and, 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 the, and, the, and I was trying to get at like this, this problem of I don't see relevance realization sort of ontologically writ. Mm -hmm. And this gets back to your point of infinite re uh, relevance realization. So let me try and, let me try and, they don't quite say this way, but I'm trying to strengthen their argument in good faith. So I'm not trying to straw man it. There's something like the idea that, because I've acknowledged sort of the idea, idea from Whitehead that possibility, first of all, as you know, I think possibility is real, it's ontologically real. The possibility has to be structured, right, in some way. Um, and, and that sort of emanation is how that plays out in how constraints are found within reality. Constraints are instantiated from the way possibility is really structured, uh, mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, and that's a very ne neoplatonic notion. Uh, and you can see it clear in Whitehead. Uh, but they were sort of, get, Mary sort of brought this idea and then and JP did something interesting with it, that you, isn't there something analogous to relevance realization in that um, infinite possibility self-constrains down to the finite things. This is an act of self-constraining that's very analogous to the self-constraining that's at the heart of relevance realization. And it's very much kind of analogous to love because in love you, you, you're doing this sort of, uh, you're doing an inherently self-limiting self thing that's also a self-transcending self thing. Because, you know, Erigena sees creation as, uh, as God's ultimate act of self-transcendence, mm -hmm. right? God is sort of, God is sort of, it's all, all of the creation still remains within God, right? Yeah. And so there's this ultimate act of self-transcendence. And I thought, I thought that was a really strong argument because you could say, okay, there's something analogous. It's not the same as our finite relevance realization, but this, this if you'll allow me a, 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 a metaphor drawn sort of from the language of physics, there's a collapse of infinity into finite things. Mm -hmm. It's a self-constraining. Um, and we we always find that bound up with how we care about things. And, and so analog analogous for yeah. us, it, it feels like, it feels like kind of like what love is. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm being very hesitant here. Right. Mm -hmm. And then of course we, ent we can enter into a communion with it that gets the mutually accelerating disclosure, which of course is experienced as we, we can fall in love with that. Mm -hmm. So I'm sort of prepared to acknowledge all of that. Okay. Um, Interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, uh, but, but like I say, I, 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 I don't, uh, so, uh, no, I sort of give with one hand. And <laughs> no, 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 but I, I, this is, a, this is, this is a good, this is a good line. Uh, yeah. you know, the, like the way that I, that I would, that I see it is similar to what you say. I don't like the, I don't use the word possibility. I just use the word infinite. I just, I like the word infinite because infinite can really just mean non, even categorically infinite. That is there, it, it sure. is boundless sure. in every, every manner. Uh, yeah. So you can imagine the, that the notion of, of, of God as boundless. So we have, we believe in one God, the father, right? And this, this, this boundless, completely boundless. And then the, the son, like the logos is exactly what you said. It's the, it's, it's the, it's the, that it's not limiting, but it's like the expression of the boundless and through that expression that's how limited things appear um but what's important like i think and that what's important in christianity this is the most important thing in christianity is that the 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 expression of the infinite is equal to the infinite that's the most important thing that's the most important thing in christianity and that's why the whole the whole fight in the fourth century was all about that is to say that the expression of the infinite has everything the infinite has. 
which is which seems contradictory but what it mm -hmm. does is that it makes it makes the world exist like it makes the world exist in, and be real and not just be an illusion okay so the first thing is um i use the word possibility uh because i want to use something that has the same scope but is paired properly with actuality because i'm mm -hmm. trying to get out of um kind of an, a, a, a metaphysics in which actuality is equated with realness so um, right. um uh, so i i think the distinctions are orthogonal I, I see what you're saying but i could see i could say you could have an infinite actuality in some sense and that might not include possibility right. infinite infinity is a weird thing so i'm trying it to make it a weird thing yeah, yeah. so weird. Uh, and the reason why I use and the, <laughs> the reason why I use possibility is because, as I tried to argue, possibility is a real, although not properly acknowledged, uh, ontological category in science itself. Mm -hmm. so there's one thing because you know laws and potential energy; these are all real possibilities, and science absolutely needs those. Um, also, and constraints in biology, for example. But also, I use the possibility because it it, it it overlaps with combinatorial explosion. So that's that's why it, it's my chosen term. I'm I, I'm not okay. I'm not I'm not committed to it in an idolatrous fashion. In that you know, it, it, I'm just it, it, and it also lines up with how, uh, like I said, how Whitehead tries to articulate how God fits in his mm -hmm. uh, model, right? Uh, God, although he ultimately says that God has to be um, a, an actuality um, in a way that I think gives into Aristotle. Put that aside. Uh, um, so, so there's that. So the the, the so what I, what I'm trying to get at is is uh, yeah I don't I don't want to get into well I, I, it's not that I want to avoid it I don't know if I can do anything of value to you or your viewers talking about the incarnation um, <laughs> <laughs> um, because because I mean like I said I see I see other places I mean the Tao Te Chen says there's the Tao and the manifestations but mm. but they're ultimately one and that one is darkness yeah right or you know form and emptiness are one and it's a non logical identity yeah. and here's another point that I, I would want to make that um, there's something analogous again it's not part of my mind it's not part of my consciousness or my intelligence I'll use those two words then okay but this is a feature. In my personhood, I participate in non-logical identity because I'm, in some sense, personally identical to the child that was one years old, born in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Now, that child and I, we, we don't share a lot of properties yeah. and we don't even share any atoms, right? Uh, right? And yet, there's, so there's non-logical identity. And I think my participation in non-logical identity gives me the analog for participating in the non-logical identity between form and emptiness, uh, the Tao and the manifestation, or perhaps if you'll allow me to do right, God and the sun. It, 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 that's, that's, again, that's not something in my consciousness or in my intelligence. It's part of the, well, I think that's part of, again, the logos of my being. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm also willing to grant uh, to Paul that where, where I disagree with Paul, he calls out our machine code. I think it's clear evidence it's not a machine code, if, if he's using that term the way I would. Because we have to, pra he says narrative is our machine code. Okay. Are, are, uh, uh, and uh, I, and I, I disagree with that because um, the machine, like, we have to teach people narrative. We have to practice it. And we do practice it. You have to teach kids narrative. That's the narrative practice hypothesis. You have to teach them and 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 teach them. And you have to really water down narrative to something like the Teletubbies, right? I, I did this twice with my kids, right? And you go through this, oh, right? And it's horrible, right? And you have to practice and practice. And, practice. and that's why they take a long time to get a sense of humor properly like, to be able to tell a joke, right? And there's all this developmental stuff and we keep practicing it with each other all the time. So I'm not, I'm not convinced that it's part of our machine code. What I think Paul, what I could agree with Paul saying is, narrative is where we practice non-logical identity. Mm -hmm. um, so narrative is where we get a temporally extended sense of self that allows us to get that non-logical identity. Yeah, um, well, it's, but, it's, the thing is that narrative does for time what names or identities do for space. Like, in, that is that, you in order to create yeah, yeah, in yeah, order yeah. to create pattern in time you need narrative and in order to create let's say pattern in space you need uh you need things that are connected together in a in, in a certain manner in a yeah, recognizable manner so that yeah, you, you can need... see the, them as an identity and so narrative does that in time and yeah. and, and uh let's say more usual c categories and naming do, does that in space like geometry geometry i mean yeah so geometry sense. there you go like or, or just yeah. you know or, yeah and so, so to me, that's what 
narrative is the capacity to to identify with time, like to to have yeah, an you, experience. Yeah, you a temporally, a temporally extended self. Yeah. Um, but I think what I want to say is, if you'll allow me these uh, these yeah. metaphors, I mean, there is there's not only non-logical horizontal identity through time. There's non-logical ontological identity through the levels of being, and I think that there that people um, pass. I mean, because that's what I'm reading and that's what I've experienced. You can pass into a trans narrative state. Perhaps it's a state that transcends both uh, the spirit of geometry and the spirit of narrative in which you get this non-logic, you, you get this ability of not to, to participate in non-logical identity that is not just the non-logical identity of narrative. Yeah, for example. no, not I think this is, this is probably where, this is where I get the, the biggest confusion in terms of, so there's there's a there's a there's a uh, there's a story that my brother told me. He he would he studied kung fu for a very long time, and that mm. story really stuck with me for a very long time. He, he was talking to me about the different uh, legendary swords that exist in the, the this kung fu mythology, and he was telling me that the uh, the very like let's say the second highest sword in their mythology was a sword where if you put the sword in the water. All the all the twigs and the branches and the leaves would come and would strike up against the sword and cut in half, um, and he was and that was the second most important uh, sword. And the the most the highest sword the highest sword was a sword that if you put it in the water, the branches would come and avoid the sword and would never touch it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, to me, the it's like if you say something like that, you can reach a state which transcends narrative. I would say yes. And then I would say, but that, that when it comes back down, it's narrative again. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and uh, so, so, so it's not, so the denial of something in, in a hierarchy, the denial of the particulars actually is the, 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 is the, the, the invisible essence of their coming together in the, on the lower, on the lower mm -hmm. aspects. Uh, and so to me, and so if like, for example, so that's why, <laughs> You know, that's why I, I really struggle with the arguments sometimes where someone would, would tries to kind of like step up above religion and then look at the different religions and say, there are examples of different, of different mm -hmm. things. And it's like, yeah, but if you come down, you have to be on a path and, and that path is coherent. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. Like in, in terms of, 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 of the, let's say that if you can reach a state, let's say a, 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 yeah. a mystical state where you're above, where you, you, you encounter something which is above narrative and is above even identity and is like, you know, this, this kind of uh, infinite moment um, that doesn't, it doesn't destroy reality. It actually oh, no. well, then would, feeds would, it. Would, it makes reality yeah, yeah. real. Oh, I, I, and, and that's exactly how people respond to experiences of ontonormativity of the really real. They come back and they transform their cells and they transform their lives to try and bring it closer into conformity. There's, there's, a, there's a inspiration in that sense, it, right? It, it, it informs and transforms their cells, their relationships and their world. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I wasn't denying that. I mean, I think, uh, I, 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 I agree that if we, you know, I'll use the like, your language when you're coming back down, um, that and that's where I think you you get the the gap between sort of metaphysical necessity and psychological indispensability. You fall into a particular narrative. I do think the different narratives do emphasize different things. I think, I mean, I think Christianity speaks about and, and, and does the best the best sort of on agape. I, I've, I've made that argument. But, you know, I think there are other experiences that are deeply contributory to meaning in life. And I have good empirical evidence for this. I think flow is really deeply important. And Christianity doesn't say much about flow that much. I mean, Taoism is the religion of flow. It, it's got a lot to say about it. It's got a lot of practices. And you're going to, if you want to, if you want to become a much better flower, Taoism is the place to go. <laughs> right, right. Um, uh, and I'm speaking not just from the outside. I've been a practitioner for like 28 years. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I again, I, 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 I'm trying to, and I said this to you at the very beginning in our first talk. And so, um, not that, not that it gives us any special authority. I'm just trying to say that there's a consistency. I'm, I'm trying to reject both relativism and perennialism, and I'm trying to use the notion that I got from cognitive science of synoptic integration. 
Cognitive science doesn't try to eradicate neuroscience or computer science or psychology or linguistics or anthropology. It's not trying to put them out of business. It's trying to create an overarching framework so that they can insightfully talk and transform each other so that we stop equivocating in powerful ways about when we try to talk about mind and meaning. And that's a different thing than both perennialism and uh, and relativism. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get beyond both of those. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's a different thing. Um, so I'm definitely not, I'm not Huxley, oh, they're all saying the same thing. And I'm not Katz, oh, they're all talking about totally different incommensurable things. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say either one of those. I'm trying to say, no, no, it, it's much like what cognitive science tries to do between the various disciplines. That's what I'm trying to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and so people often, I guess that's where I'm getting misunderstood, uh, where people are trying to say, John, it's funny, I think the, the fact that I get both sides uh, indicates um, that I'm being misunderstood. John's trying to destroy religion. Oh, no, no, John is actually trying to defend. And they're, they're, they're both sides are, I'm going to suddenly pull this philosophical rabbit out of a hat and show, aha, right, all along, I was drawing you in so that I could. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jonathan, I, I mean, I want, I want to take this opportunity to say, and I've said it in the comments, but I want to say it here because that way it'll reach more people. If people can, if they can use my work and they can return to Christianity, but also if they can return to Buddhism or Islam and Taoism, and that will enrich their ability uh, to find meaning and cultivate wisdom and compassion, great. I'm happy, right? I, I, right? I, I'm not... I am not anti-religious. That is not. No, no, no. I don't think. I don't. Th I think it'd be very difficult to 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 for people to get come to the conclusion that you're anti-religious. Um, uh, and I'm not. And I'm not simply eclectic. And that's. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying. That to I'm it. not. That I'm not so sure about. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, I think. Look, I, I I see we've been going for a while, and I have an appointment in 15 minutes. But I would. So, like, so do I. I so do I, I. All right. So I would like. So maybe we could have a conversation sooner rather than later because i do want to talk about your project like the, the actual yeah. project uh yeah. i have like you know i i've been thinking a lot about some of the things you're saying and i and i have a lot of questions in terms of sure and i, and I expect you might have criticisms and i'll take them in good faith all right i tried to do i tried to do that here with you today well i i, I appreciate i i love these discussions i really appreciate it and uh, let's do that. Let's try to do it because I think we last time we talked was almost like a year ago, maybe or, yeah. or quite a while ago. Let's try to do it sooner rather than later. I, I would uh, like that. I would like that. All right, uh, let's all right. pick, pick out a Especially time. because you're running I, out of time too. Yeah, the sabbatical. If we could get it, if we could maybe get it sometime in December, that would be good. All right, uh, let's do that. Uh, so, so, so send me some times and we'll work something out. I'm very happy to talk to you always, Jonathan. You, you know that. I'm looking forward to uh, when uh, the, the three of us will be all together. That's going to be so much fun. That, that sounds like a laugh. So people who are watching, we're going to do something in Northern Ontario. Uh, uh, John Ravakey and Paul Vanderclay and Jonathan Pajot, all the three of us together are doing a, I think it's, I think it's like two days even. And yeah, so we're going to yeah, have different yeah. talks and meetings and also have a uh, question period. So I think it's going to be, I think I really looking forward to it too. And too. Uh, I'm hoping people are going to, to come with a lot of uh, interesting thoughts as well. People, you even who come into the audience. So I think that'll be great. I, I agree. I think I think what they're I think what the Urban Abbey is doing is just just fantastic. I encourage people uh, to get there if they can because I think it's just going to be a, an amazing thing. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. All right, John. So I will I'll say goodbye for now, and then we'll yeah. we'll have another meeting sometime in December. Thanks again. Uh, uh, great. I really appreciated this discussion, Jonathan. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Okay, bye bye. Take care. Hope you enjoyed this most recent discussion with John Verveke. As we mentioned in the video. Check out my website once in a while. We'll be putting up dates very soon for an event with John, Paul, Vanderclay, and myself, which will be in Northern Ontario. Um, as Christmas comes to, I wanted uh, to put up a few things on my Teespring account. I have some Obviously Santa Claus Exists t-shirts that I designed with my children, and that was a lot of fun. And also I made a hand-drew, an inked version of my logo where the six days of creation and put in the inscriptions in English. So if you want to check that out, um, there's a link below in the YouTube channel. And you can also check out my Teespring account. So thanks a lot, and I will see you soon.